Hi there, welcome to Unscripted. I'm your host, Grace Salame, and a special thanks to Parking by Radisson for hosting us yet again. And today with me, guys, I have a special guest, Tom. Mboya. <laughs> I'm so humbled to meet you, to be in this presence with you. Like many of us, we grew up watching you. Okay. So for me, this feels like a mentorship program. Okay. So please, eh, show us the newbies, how it's really done. Thank you for having me, Grace. And by the way, when you say you watched me when you were growing up, it makes me feel old. So we're going to walk uh -huh. towards the camera together, okay? Okay. All right. Uh, good evening. Welcome to Unscripted with Grace. My name is Tom Boyer. And uh, Grace Msalame is the only person who's allowed to make me feel tall. I hope at the end of this show that somebody out there who's struggling is going to know that it's okay to struggle. Whatever it is, it's going to be fine at the end of the show. Isn't it, Grace? That is very true. That is the purpose of this show. Stay tuned and let's get started. Tom Boyer. Yes. I am so honored, humbled, and happy to have you on the show. Thank you so much for agreeing to come on. Thank you for having me. On Unscripted. Thank you for having me. Can I say hi? Hello. Isuri. Yes. The Kenyan way. The Kenyan way. The Kenyan way. The Kenyan way. How it works. It works, doesn't it? Yes, it works. How have you been? Um, I'm on top of the world. You look fantastic. Thank you very much. And I thank God. You thank God. But many years after I disappeared from mainstream. So all of us, um, from The Voice, when we see you, like that, I know that familiar face. We saw you on our screens for years. Yeah. And then poof. And then poof, yeah. yeah, where did you go to? Um, I even worked for NTV, I remember. Yes, and, um, yes. I remember. This was home at yes. some point. Oh, yes, at some point it yeah. was. And uh, I worked on air with Sophie Kenya. Yes. And uh, pleasant memories. Yeah. Highs, lows. Yeah. And I remember one specific incident when there was an earth tremor. Mm. And we were delivering the news broadcast. And everybody kind of scattered. Mm. And I was there with Sophie, and we were both so scared. And um, right in the middle of the tremor, yeah. I found myself, I summoned some strength, I don't know from where, mm. but I started talking about uh, the earthquake, the earth tremor, whatever it was, because these were aftershocks from old Daniel Lengai. And they were, they came this far yeah. up to the nation center and the studios were and you could feel on it. the fourth or fifth floor. Yeah. And we felt it and everybody yeah. ran away. And there I was talking about, these are the aftershocks of the tremor that hit old Daniel Lengai right in the middle when the tremor was taking place. Wow. So some great memories. Wow. Uh, at NTV, yeah. So where did you go to, Tom? Um, I spent about 15 years in the media. That's a very long time. I think so. Yeah. But this is what happens. You know, social media was not as strong as it is today. Mm. So what that meant is the viewers were heavily dependent on mainstream. That is true. Okay. So seeing Tomboy throughout the week for a month, for a couple of years, yeah. meant that viewers also ended up developing what we call emotional equity. Mm. You know, you become attached to a specific anchor. That's true. So when they disappear, there is a feeling that part Something of a family missing. member has left. Yeah, I okay, agree. because of those connections, and and so hence I think the reason why probably they use the word flash. Mm. Just disappeared in a flash. But here's the thing. It's because we're not seeing you exactly on a regular anymore. basis. Yes, yes you know. Okay. And, 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 but I think 15 years is a long time, long enough for me to have sort of, you know, worked on my career, you know, and uh, taken it uh, all the way to, you know, to the top. Mm. Okay. And, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied about uh, that I made certain accomplishments when I was in the media for those 15 years. I mean, you're fettered with, yeah. with awards from CNN. Oh, yes. You worked at various Ex media houses. Absolutely, you yeah. You had a good run. Oh, yeah. And, and for me, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of a vote of confidence that the industry has in somebody. And it's a, it's a good feeling, you know, just being able to be recognized after putting in a lot of effort. Yeah. And, and, you know, uh, and being told that, uh, look, Tom, we are happy with what you've done. And therefore, we feel that you're the finest in the entire continent. Imagine that. Okay, all right? I mean, being, being identified as the finest in the whole continent. That's huge. It's huge. And you can ask any journalist. I mean, uh, a CNN award comes with a lot of prestige. Mm. Okay? Um, but unknown to many people, two years after I won the CNN award, I won a global award. I 
see. Okay. And, uh, and one of the reasons why I thought a time had come for me to leave is yeah. because I, I looked back and said, I have been fettered with CNN in 2012, yeah. best journalist in Africa. And two years later, I received a global award in Kuala Lumpur. And therefore, I asked myself, so what would be the incentive for me to stay on in media? Africa was nice to me. The world was nice to me. So unless it was for the money, I mean, why would I stay on? That's deep. So okay. you felt like what more is there for me? Exactly. Or to give even? Absolutely. And so that, at that point, I thought, this is it. This is where I jump and move from success, external success, awards, certificates, scholarships, yeah. and now move on to uh, something bigger, something uh, I call significance, Did where now I'm not getting from the world, but I'm actually giving, giving back, back to the to world. The world. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Um, so within that transition, though, um, there are various conversations um, about whether it's alcohol abuse or how that may have affected the journey in any way. Was that part of the process at all? It saddens me deeply to see, uh, you know, the youth especially mm -hmm. struggle with, uh, with alcoholism. All right, and uh, I've been sober now ten years. Congratulations! Thank you, and uh, and so the reason I talk about it is I, I I hope that I you know reach out to somebody there who thinks that you know that they've hit a dead end. Mm. I want somebody to look at me and say, Tom struggled and won, okay, and he's been sober ten years. I can do it as well. How did you do it? How did I do it? I, I ran into trouble at some point in my life, uh -huh. okay? Um, you got a great job, you know, um, good salary and so on. And so I was able to find that lifestyle of, of, of drinking. Yes. And, um, and so I ended up in hospital. I see. Okay. It became too much for your body to handle. Yes, it became too much for the body to handle. I, I, I spoke with... Uh, a research guy who told me, uh, and I found it very interesting, he told me that uh, a man needs about 14 units of alcohol a week mm. to function optimally. Okay. And a lady needs about seven. Okay. Okay. So using that, that barometer, he told me that for me, I think I'd, I'd uh, consumed my allocation of 40 years in 10 years. So it meant the body got a beating. And that's why I ended up in hospital, okay? mm -hmm. um, uh, with a condition called pancreatitis. I see. Okay. It's, it's a disease that is linked with alcohol. So people are quietly suffering from pancreatitis, mm -hmm. but they don't want to talk about it. Okay? And thanks for, for just uh, inviting me to talk about it. I think because, it's necessary. Yeah, it's important. Uh, and and, and uh, sometimes I tell people that alcohol was going to kill me, but pancreatitis came and helped me you. and saved me, all right? So if it saved me, then it's, a, it's something that we can talk about openly. That's very true. All right? In fact, one thing okay. you were saying yeah. earlier is why do you think, um, especially for men, it's very yeah. hard for a man to be vulnerable and talk about the experiences and share that, you know, on such openly. a platform. Yes, openly. Yeah. Um, why do you think that is so, and why did you say, you know what, yeah. I'm going to break the silence and do it? Significance. What I'm doing now is I'm mobilizing all the experiences that I've had in life, yeah. okay? All right? All the talents that I have, the knowledge capital that I've built over the years, yeah. the skill set that I possess, okay? And, 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 and I'm saying I gotta give this back, mm. okay? In my own little way. Yeah. If it's, for example, getting a 20-year-old who's studying journalism mm. at the university, yeah. then I wanna reproduce myself through that youngster, okay? So for me, it's more about giving back okay. okay in my own little way all right yeah. talking to those who are struggling encouraging them telling them that it can be done, it can be done. okay and if i get a platform like this you know why shouldn't i step forward and come and share my story with people if it's going to make touch somebody somewhere who's struggling yeah. okay and also i think it's there's a culture in this country where we we talk more about successes. I agree. But then there's a gap. And I know that failure 
is what feeds success. If you, if you interview most of these successful people, they'll tell you that they, hit they failed. Yeah. They hit rock bottom. But if you look at the narratives that have been created, we only see people in the front row who have succeeded. And you don't share how they got there. Exactly. I remember there was a research that was done and some youngsters were asked, you know, you know, and, and they said that, you know what, as long as they create wealth, it doesn't matter how. Okay, even if, even if. It doesn't matter what they're doing. It's it doesn't legal. matter how, whether it's legal, yeah. it doesn't matter. As long, because those are the images that portrayed. have been portrayed. Mm. Okay. And uh, we all remember Thomas Edison and uh, the, the light story. He tried a thousand times. Okay. So he failed a thousand times, but ultimately got the prototype. Okay. And if you look at those far countries, they boldly talk about failures. Mm, I okay. Agree. All right. They, and, and they're proud of saying, we tried, we fell seven, we woke up eight. Mm. We tried a thousand times and, you know, we ultimately got the light. Okay. Mm. All right. But um, here it's more of a Simon Maconde narrative. Uh -huh. Okay. You know, somebody is born on Monday, on Wednesday. Is 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 begging in the streets. On, on on Thursday, he has a title deed for you know an area like in Karen. And, and on Friday, Friday he's, he's so wealthy. And on Saturday, you know, Sunday he's dead. In fact, there's okay. a quote I found the other day, and it yeah. says, "Don't let success get to your head, nor let failure get to your heart." Yeah. Um, I think that's one thing that we need to remind people at home. Exactly. Because um, the focus is so much on building this thing, yeah. yet forgetting that there will be moments yeah. where you will hit rock bottom, yeah. and it's okay. And it's okay, yeah. I think that's what the issue is. People are very afraid of talking about it because maybe they've, brought up, they've grown up knowing it's, yeah. it's wrong to fail, or yeah. I don't know if it's just programming that we need to go back to. Yeah. I don't know your thoughts on that. It's, it's the narratives that have been created, mm. you know, in the homes, in the office set up. Uh, you know, people saying, you know, failure is not an option for us. Yeah. Yeah, we are A minus material and we're going for nothing exactly. but the best. All our parents are number one, right? Exactly, and all of them are number one. And so those are the things that are sort of internalized by these young people. Yeah. So when they're confronted with situations where they feel they're failing, they don't know how to handle it. And, 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 and it doesn't surprise me that we're seeing an increase in number of people taking their lives, you yes. know, killing their... Depression and suicide is on the rise. Exactly. And for me, I don't think... I don't think these people are necessarily killing themselves. Yeah. I think it's just that inability to confront uh, failure. Mm. And, 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 and when they find themselves stranded, then what they're killing is actually that failure. But in the process, there's collateral damage. Indeed. You know? There's a cardinal principle of life. I call it the principle of balance. Tell me. That a time has come for us to, yes, talk about our, our, our achievements. Yes. But we should also balance it off and say there are moments when we fell short of expectations, mm. okay? So that the people who are watching us know that for you to accomplish a certain goal, you know, there are valleys and hills that you must go through. There are sacrifices as well. There are sacrifices that yeah. must be made. And so it's important that we have more people, you know, like Tomboy stepping forward and telling them, look, I struggled with alcoholism, yeah. okay? All right? I was on top of my career without a mentor. Yeah. And so a lot of things were learned, you know, on through trial and error and on the job, okay? Uh, so, so that they, they are aware that for you to ultimately emerge as the finest in Africa, it comes at a price. And it's not an overnight success. And there is a lot of sacrifice that, yeah. that you know, must, must be put in. So for me, and I hope that you're going to call a lot more people <laughs> who have, you know, we who are. have accomplished certain things in life. Yeah. To come and just debunk that myth that it's wrong to fail. I agree. Yeah. Or it's wrong to miss the target. Okay. You can miss the target, but that's okay. You just need to, you know, take two steps back, you know, reconfigure yourself, yeah. uh, be composed, and, and dash for the gold medal. In so, fact, so, as, yeah. as you go and break, I think it's a quote from Oprah, and she said, for her, there's no such thing as failure, yeah. but it's just redirection. Exactly. It's a way for your, your mind, your, your, your truth telling you, yeah. actually, maybe yeah. try this other route. This is not yeah. the way you should go. Exactly. Yeah. On that note, we'll be right back with Tom Boyer. Stay tuned. Thank you so much for staying tuned, Tom. Thank yes. you for coming on the show and being open and frank to share your experience. And so for me, I'm curious to know, how is it then, Tom, as a dad? Because I know you're a father. Um, six kids? How many children? <laughs> I could be wrong. Where did you get that one from? How, how many children are there? 
Um, yes, six, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Um, so when it comes to parenting, um, with this in mind of how this generation, you know, we need... Sounds like a crowd, doesn't it? <laughs> a good crowd. A good crowd. Got a small football team. Yeah. So it's, um, yeah, how is, um, how is Tom as a parent with all this in mind in terms of just mentoring the kids um, on a different path? How are you doing it? Um, the kids are all grown up. Um, the journey had its fair share of troubles. Mm. And uh, remember, in the first part of this show, we say that uh, you need a balance of troubles you and do. triumphs. You okay? do. You do. Um, How was it in the initial stages? In the initial stages, it, 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 it intimidates and it scares the hell out of somebody. But I think with time, you sort of um, settle down you go inside mm. because you realize that you probably have to play the role of a father yeah. and a mother. Uh -huh. Okay? All right? Because so from get-go you were... Exactly. There is a feeling that fate has conspired against you and, you know, and so there you are all alone and the kids are there. What do you mean all alone? So from get-go you are a single father? Um, Just you and the kids? No, I mean, there was... There was but he wasn't working out. There was, a, yeah. Okay. There, there were... There were they were, I think, I think we, we were parents when we were young. Mm. Yeah, so we're being parented still. Mm. And there we were having now to parent kids. Yeah. Okay. So you, you sort of don't appreciate the dynamics of the institution of marriage yet. Okay. So a number of mistakes are made, but that's fine. You sort of pick up the lessons and you move True. on. Because there are True. kids there. There's life that you have to travel. Yeah the journey of life and so on and so forth. So what I did is I said, you know what, I'm going to go in and fix my inner engineering, my worldview, you know, smoothen the rough edges and so that I can function effectively both as a dad and a mom. So you decided to work on you first. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, because I realized that if I do that, then happiness finds me. I don't have to go out looking for it. As it should be. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and so... You know, so, so that I did, and, and I realized that probably that's the reason why, you know, uh, the kids now are in campus. And, 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 and I feel some deep sense of pride that I, I did it all alone. Look at that. You know, but unknown to, yeah. I think faith, oh my goodness, faith, yeah. Just ensuring that you create an environment where mm. nothing is ever going to disrupt your, your flow of life, yeah. If you're faced with a problem, yeah. define it. Okay? Mm -hmm. Give it a name. Okay? All right. And once you've done that... What do you do? Put it down. Sit it down. Uh -huh. Yeah. Have a word with it. Yes! I mean, use soft power. Just talk to it nicely. Okay? I'm trying to figure out why are you in my life? Yeah. How do I because get rid of this? Because, 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 because th this is a problem that's on transit. So you don't want to squander the opportunity to sort of pick up the lesson that it, it brings along with itself. So, so put it down and have a chat with it. And, you know, you weaken it slowly. You do. You know, so by the time it goes, uh, which it will, you know, you are left with certain lessons and, you know, you're better, you're bigger, you're wiser. I like what you said. It's about lesson. With yeah. everything that happens in life, there's something yeah. in there for you yes. to learn. Yes, yes. Yes. I mean, I mean, you're asking me about alcoholism, something that I subdued 10 years ago. Yeah. Okay. There's lessons that have been learned, and these are the lessons that I'm now sharing with, with the, anybody who cares to listen to me. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and some of those lessons are very valuable. Mm. Yeah. So for me, I think it's important for us to start that conversation around, it's not bad to face problems. Okay. I think it's how we... Handle the problem. Deal with these problems. You know. Speaking of problem, yeah. what do you feel has been, has been the biggest challenge that you feel you faced in your life, Tom? Um, could it be the alcoholism and that struggle, um, transition from, in terms of career-wise, mm -hmm. or what's, I know the situation about your son you've shared okay. before. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, what's been the hardest struggle? Yeah, there are a number of things, obviously, because, you know, life is a journey. Mm. And um, journey and distance are linked. And the moment you talk about distance, then there's a component of speed and time. So it means we can calculate these things, all right? Sometimes. And so for me, um, the, the valleys, the hills that I've had to pass through, yeah. there are many things that, you know, have shaken me. Mm. Uh, and uh, one that stands out is, um, you know, the brutal attack on my son. Yeah, tell me about that. What happened? Um, uh, it's... 
this guy was was I think he, he probably had disagreed with with, with his friends, mm. you know, and, uh, and um, they planned to 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 revenge. To re I don't know. That's revenge. It? I don't know what it is, mm. but they attacked him. That I know. Oh. And they attack the intention. If you looked at the kind of injuries the young guy had, mm. I think the intention was death. All right. But for some reason he didn't die, so he lived to tell the to story. Tell the tale. Okay, and um, the summary is he went through seventeen procedures on on the on the jaw. on the jaw, okay, and uh, and three hundred stitches on the face, okay, and sometimes I ask myself where I, I don't know where the courage because I looked at. I looked at the guy. Yeah, how is it seeing your you son know, in that state? Yeah, in that state. It, it weakened me, obviously. But when I looked at his eyes, yeah. what did you see? I saw him healing. Look, that sounds scary, but I told him. I looked straight at his eyes and, and for and some that reason. Time he was in a bad state. He was in a bad state, there was blood all over the you know, oh my goodness. It, it was not it was it was a very unpleasant uh, mm -hmm. image. But but I looked at his eyes and I knew he was gonna be okay. And that's what I told him. And your heart was calm? Yes. And I was peaceful and I was calm. The mother was a bit disturbed, yeah. yeah but, but when I saw the boy's eyes, I knew he was going to be okay. And I told him. I told him, you're going to be okay, Baba. Don't worry. Look at that. Yeah. And he's okay. He's okay. He's okay. Look he's okay. That. But the matter, I think, is still in court. And, you know, so I don't want to talk more, uh, okay. much about it. Okay. Yeah. Yet still, yeah. um, your disposition, yeah. Tom, I told us saying earlier, yeah. you walk into a room. Yeah. Instantly, the energy changes. It's oh, really? Yeah, it's warm. It's pleasant. What? Yeah, imagine you. you oh my God! That. Oh, you okay. <laughs> oh, really? I don't know. So, where do you draw? Where do you draw that from? Like, um, as I said, I think if you just fix your inner engineering and, and just you know fix things inside, then yeah. then it's okay. You're not dependent on anything or anybody. I mean, you you arrive happy. You know, it's okay. Yeah. You know, things are happening inside. That is true. Okay. I mean, I, I, I'm looking at you right now, and, and you have presence, you know what I mean? Um, but how do I know you have presence? Yeah. Because I can feel it. Uh -huh. Okay. So these things, I think, are an inside job. You, you fix inside, and you're okay. You fix it And inside. you're free, you're free. Yeah. That's how you become free. That's how you become free. Yeah, I think, yeah. And what I must ask, because you've, you've shared about it, you're now approaching halftime. Fifth floor. Yes. Fifth floor. Fifth floor. Yeah. Yeah. How are you feeling? Oh, great. The view is good up there, <laughs> you know, and, um, and I thank God. I mean, look, 50, 50 is a nice place to be. How yeah. are you viewing life differently? What's, what do you feel is going to be different about this new season in your life? Um, there's a deep sense mm -hmm. that my second half is going to be big. I don't know. I, I can't put my finger on the pulse of that. But I know for sure, and it's coming from deep inside. Really? Yeah. That means you're in a good place. Uh, I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> but it's a feeling because, I don't know, the, the, the optics that I'm using to look at life have mm. obviously evolved. Of course. Okay? And, um, and I'm looking at life and I'm thinking it's... it's it's a great thing to have and just to enjoy and, you know. You're more appreciative yeah, of, of I mean, everything, just exactly. being present in every moment. Yes. Mm. I mean, unlike previously where I would worry more about the next accolade, the next prize, mm. the, the impression that I'll create around, what people think about me, etc. Now I'm I thinking, no. So you're free of that. Yeah, I feel liberated and, and liberated by all these things that I've gone through life. Okay, because I've, I've, I've come out from the other side stronger. It didn't kill me. It didn't, obviously, yes, it destabilizes you, but look, you know. So somehow, that first stuff is, is good and is important. And I think when you're doing the second half, it's, it's, about, it's about fixing yourself. True. Yeah. If you, if you look around and you see... You see, you you see, you know, your neighbor, and and then you think your neighbor is is not outgoing, mm. you know. Then fix that thing in you. You know, mm. we are told that what that bothers you is a reflection of, is a reflection of, of some, some struggles here. Yeah. So if you if you can use that formula to fix yourself, then sixty to seventy percent of the work is done. 
I love that. I hope you're yeah. taking notes at home. I know I like that. That's yeah. tweetable. That's my yeah. tweet for this show. Yeah. What do you want to create now? What do you want to be known for or remembered um, for? I just want to be this guy who goes to church on Saturday, this guy who connects with his kids, this guy who goes to the mall, you know, uh, you know, because cause, cause, cause I was there and I, I accomplished what I went to do and I'm happy and satisfied with whatever I accomplished. So the new season. I want to move to, to the second half and the second half has to and that's be on my terms. It yeah. has to be on your terms. Yeah. Yeah. I think we'll take a short break and come yeah. back and hear about Tom's second half. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Thank you so much for staying tuned to Unscripted. And a special thanks to Parkin by Radisson for hosting us yet again. Tom. Yes. Mashkuru sana. Sante. I'm so grateful to have you here. I'm honored and humbled. I'm a big fan. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I am. So this is very <laughs> big you. for me, Mashkuru. Thank you. Thank you. So I have to ask, you've shared your <coughs> experience and your life journey I'm curious to know, you've, you've alluded to it, but you've not, um, you've not talked about it yet. Mm -hmm. What are you up to now? now? What is Tom doing? Yes. Tom is doing his halftime. Um, it's, it's a moment uh, of taking stock of where I've come from okay. and putting these things somewhere in a pool where I can look at them very closely mm. and, um, and see what mistakes have been made in the first half. Um, uh, what achievements have been accomplished in the first half. The reason why I left mainstream mm. from where I sit was because I thought then I needed to go and find myself. And this is a nice moment in my life to really figure out what I want to be. Because okay. as I indicated to you, yeah. um, in my conscious, it's, there's a lot of clarity that, mm -hmm. that, that it's big. And, and, and I have to drive it and run with it. I right. see. So I think once... Um, so you, you're first being sure of yes, what it is ex exactly. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of uh, just ensuring that, you know what? Because it's the second half. It is. The second half normally has purpose and everything. You've learned a lot during the first half. Yes. You know the strengths and weaknesses of the mm. other, of the opponent, etc. Yeah, and so yourself. You, yeah, and yourself. Mm -hmm. So you come back and, and, and you design a roadmap that will guide you in that trajectory. I see. Yeah, so um, it's okay if I spend another day in the, you know, uh, in figuring case. that out. Okay. You know, I don't mind. But, okay. but, but uh, I thank God that, you know. That you're here. Yeah, that I'm here. And, and you know. But I know you're big on mentorship. Um, yeah, because, I do. Yeah. It, uh, yes, yes, I... I I talk to these people, mm. yeah, there's power in words. I talk to them, I mm. share stories with them, and I see their reaction. Some of them, um, you know, uh, some of them sort of want more. And, 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 you know, those are the indicators. That's why I'm saying second half is going to be very clear, mm. okay? Those are the indicators that probably uh, it's time to structure it. I see. All right? Structure it and, you know, it. give it a direction and, you know, and, and flow with it. Just look around. There's a demographic that we're going to lose unless we step forward. I mean, everybody's whizzing doing this. If it's not politics, it's creating wealth. If it's not create, nobody is talking to. And you know what? Why? The um, 45 to 70 demographic is diminishing. I agree. The one that's expanding is. It's a youth. And that's the one that is being is unattended. And that's where we are seeing an uptake in, you know, mental uh, health issues yes. amongst that demographic. And for me, that's the demographic represented by my own children. That is true. Yeah. That is There's something okay. about when you have kids yeah. that changes everything. Exactly. Yeah. So, so we have to connect with these people. We must pay attention to the issues that they are confronted with. Mm. Okay. Um, for you, this is, you talk to people. Yeah. and talking to people is a big yeah. part of oh, yes. um, your DNA now. Yeah. Uh, but during the break, we talked about how we don't get why we don't have more people like you who are okay to talk about it, talk about the struggle, yeah. Yeah. talk about the failure, yeah. and help the next person. Yeah. And you asked me, why do you think that is so, Grace? Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, ah, it could be shame, it could be... But you said you have the answer. Well, right? maybe, I don't know, maybe, um, maybe the people who ought to step forward mm. They have their stories, but there's a way their stories are warped. Uh -huh. Yes. 
And so, so why they fear would you? What society will judge I don't them, know so. because look, I mean, here in this country, I mean, I, I know people who, you know, it, two months, hmm. somebody has moved from a millionaire to a billionaire. Uh -huh. I mean, how do you explain you that? I mean, Grace, if you gave somebody a platform <laughs> yeah, to, to, to talk to the youth, I mean, you're going to ask that person just to sort How of, did that happen? You know, yeah. 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 Because, you know, so, so not many people want to come forward. All right? It. Because it means that you're going to subject them to scrutiny. Mm, which they don't want. Okay? Which, which they don't want because they want that part of their life tucked in safely in file 13 under lock and key. Mm -hmm. Never to be opened. All right? But that's fine. If that's their journey, that's okay. okay. What we are saying is we need uh, to now come forward. I've, I've got a friend who always, you know, he plays golf on a single digit. And every time he goes to play golf, I tell him, no, it's okay. You go, I'm going to play music. Oh. Okay. Okay. Because music yeah. is also one of those platforms that you can use to speak to people. So what do you mean by you play music? I pick a six-string guitar. I play it. Oh, wow. I have a script. And I shout it out there. Oh, why didn't I ask And you I come do with it quietly. Guitar? I do it quietly, yeah. but probably, as I said, halftime gives you a chance to sort of reconfigure Think yourself. And see. Uh -huh. yeah. and see what you're going to. So there's something come. coming. Yes, yes. And, 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 uh, and, um, and as I said, I mean, uh, storytelling can be done through various ways. Through various ways, including uh, music. Oh. Are you happy? Am I happy? Mm -hmm. um, at the risk of repeating myself, I said it's an inside job. that it's an inside job. <laughs> and once you figure that out, okay, then you don't have to look for happiness. It comes. It comes on its own. It and comes. it comes dressed nicely, looking good, and it joins you and it gives you company. Uh -huh. Whether it's happiness, uh -huh. whether it's money, uh -huh. okay, whether it's a good stable home. Once you fix yourself, then you become, you attract all those positives that right? is true. That okay. is true. they come on their own you know just so, speaking so, of something yeah. good and dressed well yeah. and yeah. you know yeah. beautiful and great they follow you and they, they smoke you out from wherever you're hiding as long as you fixed self mm -hmm. yeah and i know that for sure because i've been around now for some time i'm I headed see. to the fifth floor hello so you're aware i'm aware so i know i know a few things so are you settled now do you want to settle down and enjoy the 50s with someone um, if I'm allowed to ask that. <laughs> I think it's important to fix self, in my view, yeah. Okay. Once you fix yourself, okay. you fix the inner engineering, deal with issues of the past, yeah. forgive, okay? Mm. Redefine agendas inside. Yeah. Everything falls in place. Got it. Thank everything you. falls Thank you in for place. answering it. Yet not answering it, but kind of answering it. Everything, <laughs> everything falls, falls in into place. place. Everything. everything. Work front, family front. Yeah. All right? Everything. There's a lot of clarity. Mm -hmm. And that is what is important. It's not whether Tom has works for this company or has this person as a... You know, once you fix all that, yeah. then you now understand your purpose of life. That is true. Yeah. Do you have any fear, greatest fear going forward? Fear? Or anything that gives you the chills, yeah. Did you get butterflies before you started this show? Yeah, you asked me that. I think just for the camera goes on, yeah. you get it a little bit. A little bit. And, it comes and I, think, I think we need, we need a bit of fear. Mm. We need a bit of fear because it simply means that there is caution, sometimes abandoned, sometimes not abandoned. But it's there. So, so it's, it's, it's about rerouting that energy and yeah. then now making it work for you. I mean, would you walk into the lion's den? I know Paul. Was it Paul or who? Who did and survived? Daniel. 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 Yeah. But we wouldn't, you know. So we need fear sometimes. It depends on the circumstance that you find yourself in. Okay. So I wouldn't say, you know, uh, I think fear is important. Just the same way failure is important. I see. Yeah, because it plugs into success. Fear plugs into developing a thick skin and you're able to confront whatever comes your way. Mm, yeah. Feel the fear and do it anyway. Yeah. Like I said, thank you so much for sharing your experience. Um, as we wrap, if there's anything you'd like to tell someone at home, any parting shot, any word of encouragement, any lesson you've learned, maybe biggest life lesson, what would that be? If they tell you that it's impossible, 
Don't listen to them. Pay attention to what they're not telling you. It's actually possible. Thank you. Yes. It's possible. It's possible. Yeah. It's possible. It is. It can be done. Moving from depression to happiness, mm -hmm. moving from difficulty to safety, moving from challenges to bliss, joy, all that is possible. It is. It's yeah. not the end of the world. Yeah. You just need to fix your mindset and be receptive to those things. And they'll come as long as you put effort. Because at the intersection, something beautiful is created. And that's the thing that crawls, walks, runs, and then Takes before off. you know it, it has air wings, wings. and it's airborne. Yeah. This thank, was, you. thank you so much for thank the you for having lessons. me. Thank you for having me, Grace Musalaba. <laughs> thank Finally you. Finally, see you one on one. <laughs> I'm honoured to also meet you. Yeah. Nashkuru sana. And to you at home, I hope you're happy to catch up with Tom after so many years of not seeing him on air. We are glad he's back home, if I can insist on NTV. <laughs> <laughs> we wish him all the very best. Of course, a special thanks to Parkin by Radisson. Thank you once again for hosting us tonight. We truly appreciate. If you want to reach us, please do. Our handles are right below. We'd love to hear from you. But until next week, good night and God bless.